The following broadcast contains subject material that may not be appropriate for younger audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. The views and opinions expressed in the program do not necessarily reflect those of WTVA, its parent company, Heartland Media, or its sister station, WLOV. Blood was found in three different locations throughout the house, the daughter's bedroom, the hallway, and the kitchen. It gives us a feeling that there was an uh, act of violence there. That's, that's all we know right now. Of course, that would tell anybody that uh, foul play was probably involved, but uh, nothing indicating uh, that there was a car in or around the area. Please go out and search your property. Um, have your neighbors and friends go search their property so that we can find my daughter. See if you're out there and you can see this, please contact us. No matter what, just please let us know if you're all right. Is the other side of the family, meaning um, Lee's mother and, and stepfather, are they going to join you all in any of these searches? Have you heard? Not that I'm aware of. If they did it, if they do, it's going to be a surprise to me. This is me when I was something like 13 years old. I'm Jason Lee Usry. And later in life, I produced a WTVA podcast on the Lee Ochi case. This is Lee Ochi when she was something like 13 years old. I'd like to be able to show you a picture of Lee all grown up now, but I can't do that because something happened way back in August of 1992. On the morning of the 27th, when Tupelo, Mississippi was feeling the effects of Hurricane Andrew, Lee Ochi vanished. Fast forward 25 years, I was working on the podcast and I met someone who had spent a great deal of her life wondering what happened to Lee. This is Lauren Ochi on the lap of her sister, Lee, technically half-sister. They share a father, this man, Donald. They do not share a mom. Lauren's mom, who has since passed, can be seen here in Tupelo to search for Lee. And here is Lee's mom. The family and friends greatly appreciate everything, everybody that's come out here to help us search. Uh, it's been amazing what the community has done to pull together for Lee. Yeah, a lot of people thought Vicki, that's the mother's name, Vicki exhibited strange behavior after Lee vanished. And for a whole host of reasons, rumors around North Mississippi were that Vicki knew what happened was maybe even responsible. The talk was so rampant that Vicki moved away, out of Mississippi. And 26 years later, the case is still unsolved. No one's ever been arrested. There are only questions. So Lauren Ochi decided to come to Tupelo to see things for herself, to walk in her sister's footsteps, to get answers. I just I just hope we learn a little bit more than what we have so far. I don't, I don't know. Just to get more evidence to push it in the right, push the case in the right direction. She joined up with me and the WTVA creative content team and what we all found was more than we could have imagined. 13 year old Leochi has been missing since 1992. It's just a bizarre case. The system didn't work for her. It failed it completely. He figured, well, it's an open and shut case. And of course, it didn't get shut. Lauren Ochi checked herself and her daughter into her temporary digs at Moon Lake Farm Bed and Breakfast. Our theory being that some peace and quiet a tranquil place to reflect at the end of each day would be important. It didn't hurt that there were horsies for her daughter to see. The next morning, she checked her girl in at Stepping Stones Daycare, a big deal for both Lauren and the little one as they don't often spend time apart. It was a little surreal seeing her walk into WTVA, meeting people involved in the podcast for the first time. The first item on the agenda was sitting down to watch old news footage archived video from the early WTVA 9 News coverage. That was a very positive thing for me. I'm very feeling positive about it that someone has her and she is safe. And I want to let that person know that just let her come home safely. That's all that we want. We just want her to come home. I don't care about anything else. Just let her come home safe. 
and that's, I'm sorry, that's all. So at this point, though, you do have Lauren found those old clips helpful, but she also wanted to meet and get the perspective of someone who was there at the time covering the story. The ideal person for that came forward. Terry Smith is an icon in our little part of the world. He was a WTVA 9 News anchor back in 92, but he was also calling the shots as the news director. He sat down with Lauren in the WTVA creative content studio. Well, I was news director at that time, so my job was more or less working with our whole crew and trying to decide where, when we would cover this and that and that sort of thing. But I can't remember a lot of specifics like who, re, who reported on this or that. But one of the things I do remember the actual day that she was missing, I remember driving out to the house after the six o'clock newscast. And um, when I drove up, of course, there were a lot of people there on that, in that neighborhood. Um, and I drove up, not trying to be in the way, but I guess I just wanted to kind of get an idea uh, more so f for myself of what was going on. And thankfully, and I cannot remember who it was, but one of the police officers that was involved in, in the uh, working of that investigation walked over to my car. I was in my own personal car and I walked over to my car and I rolled down the window and he put his head there by the window. And I can remember two things. I, I remember the look on his face and I remember, and I'm just summarizing, I remember that he said, this is not good. You know, everything was just, was unknown. Where did she go? Um, and, and I think because, you know, as you can and understand, understand, there have been a lot of stories very similar. There have been other stories of, of very, very tragic situations uh, that we've uh, had to cover. And, but I think, I think, I think as much as anything was the fact that here is this sweet little girl, you know, uh, and now none of us know where she went. This is a case that really bothered us. You know, we're human too. Didn't take Lauren long to see why Terry Smith is so well liked. Next, we took her to visit some significant locations around Tupelo, starting with Lee's old neighborhood. For most of the investigators and volunteer searchers way back when, the ditch near Lee's house seemed as good a place as any to start looking. How they've been able to... But of course, nothing's ever turned up. How, how, well, yeah, I mean, but how would they have been able to take her out there? Apparently, a dog with the police department hit on a gutter or manhole within a couple weeks of the disappearance, though. I think that it's more likely that they did trap her into one of those sewage things. And they wouldn't have even been able to look in there for how long because of the hurricane and all the rain. That trip was an emotional one for Lauren. We needed to take a few to reset, so the next thing we did was not so heavy. Lauren had been looking forward to personally thanking the sponsors of this project. That includes Bev Crossan at Farmhouse Tupelo. And just a little boutique store. I've been in business since 2012. Um, so I have a lot of local art artists. So if you look here, primarily women. I have any Sloan chalk paint. It's a decorative paint. It's been around for 25 years from London, England. Mm -hmm. I'm a decorative paint person, so I love faux finishing. Mm -hmm. and painting and that sort of thing. So I have gifts and with local art and a lot of local artists and I teach a lot of workshop classes. Um, we have a calligraphy class, abstract class, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So we like to find, you know, we like to do like a girls night out mm -hmm. and everybody come after work and mm -hmm. um, 
paint and learn stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I can't imagine from your perspective, but from my perspective, just hearing a little bit about it. Yeah. And then hearing um, other people coming in and tell their story or what they remember, what they, you know. Yeah. 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 Thank you for sponsoring yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, I'm happy to. I'm she especially wanted to show appreciation for our biggest supporter, Chris at Tupelo Satellite. Not only is he a podcast sponsor, Tupelo Satellite and Dish Network actually paid Lauren's airfare to get here. And one of the podcasts, it was talking about where they actually search for your sister, right? And uh, was in the, the field where present day Walmart is, you see. And I told my sister, Christina, I said, do you, you know, do you know where that's at? And she's, she's like, where? It really just didn't, she didn't put two and two together. And I said, it's right across the street. And she looked and she said, what? She's right across the road. And I said, then all that stuff was not there. You see, so, you know, um, I hope this brings a resolution to it. Um, the current, from what I've learned in the podcast, one of the investigators at the time is the current police chief. Um, from what I've known and heard of him, I think he's a good man. I think he tries hard, you see. And so maybe this uh, this will help, gain, you know, help him to get a, a renewed effort and then finding out about, you know, what happened here. But I think it's good. I think it's good what WTVA is doing. I think it's good that you're here. You know, I, mean, I know it may be a bit painful for you reliving some of this stuff, you know. And I think with this whole thing here, this will bring a renewed effort into finally laying this matter to rest and, and everybody's heart and mind, yeah. you see, yeah. um, and, and, and yours and your family's most of all. Before this project came to be, Lauren started speaking with a group of retired and decorated detectives known as the Cold Case Foundation. Those guys advised her first and foremost to talk to those who were close to Lee, because as they say, understanding the victim is the key to solving a case. John Bradley was not just a classmate, he was a rare friend to Lee. He too joined Lauren in the creative content studio. Uh, kind of like how we, like all the other students, I guess, just going through class and different, being in different classes together, then riding the bus together. That's kind of how I got kind of closer with it, too, mm -hmm. riding the bus. What was she like? What was your friendship like? <laughs> it, was a, it was a good little friendship. Like, I mean, I was like the tall, big guy, and this short little white girl, but. Just talk about little crazy things and how your day went and what was going on with you. Um, I remember getting bullied, uh, I guess, from some of you know, the girls and girls in the classrooms and stuff. It was like, it was terrible. And when she was ride the bus, I was like, because that's the only time I had like some me time with her. Um, I'll just tell her to sit in the, in the bus seat with me so they can touch her or wouldn't, wouldn't mess with her. This is my little sister, you know what I'm saying? You're not gonna pick on her, she's gonna sit with me if she wants to, and you better not say nothing, you better not put your hands on her. That's all there was, and like, she would talk, I mean, she would talk to me like she would talk to anybody. Like she would talk to another girl, another guy. And one thing I remember talking about is um, when she would come and get on the bus with the bruises on her legs. And that's when she was sitting on the bus with me, and I would see them on her legs, she'd wear like a dress or shorts. I'm like, what happened? And she'd always say, oh, it's, I fell, or I want them to this, something like that, to that nature. But I always felt like it was something different, like there was something at home that was going on. She just never would say, this happened, that happened. And she got on the bus one time with a big black eye. I'm like, what happened? I'm like, a horse kicked me. Then all of a sudden, I was like, a horse kicked you? And all of a sudden, like, the other kids started asking, whoa, what happened? You know, they see a little kid get on the bus with like a whole side of her face, about black and blue. Everybody wants to know what happened. I just remember the teachers looking, like talking, but I just don't remember anybody doing anything about it. That kind of bothered me. That was a lot on kids to see her face like that. But that was coming after the bruises here, bruises here, bruises here, bruises here. And like, I'm like, I know these teachers see this. Like this. And then like the eye thing, I'm like, they should have took her in the guidance office right then. Like, they should have had um, whatever the, the case workers or whatever to come check that out yeah. and go to her house and see what was going on. Cause that's a child with, like with more than one bruise on them. Like somebody needs to be asking some questions. I just feel like, man, like I was a kid then. If I knew what I knew now, 
I would call the police myself, you know. She always had an excuse had for reason. She had reasons. And the horse, when she, when she had the big black eye, she said the horse kicked her. That threw everybody off, all the classmates. Like, nah. I don't care how young or how, what your mental mentality was, slow or, or smart, you know a horse didn't kick this girl. Yeah. And that's when everybody was like, something's up, something's happening. You would think that's when the police would have came and been asking questions on campus. That's when social workers would have been there. That wasn't the case, and then she disappeared. Boom. I was showing it on the news, and like, I was like, ah, you know, maybe it's just something. That, you know, maybe she ran away or something because I figured she was getting hit. I'm like, ah, maybe she ran away. She finally got tired. She gonna run away. All this gonna be solved, but she probably gonna move. I'm thinking like that. I never was thinking like we would never find it. If you had anybody in her, in the class that knew her, almost everybody did. They knew whatever happened, happened at home. I still get emotional even just thinking about it. I see that sweet little face, the little blonde hair, like the little voice, John. I'm like, get on the sound with me, we'll be all right. Ain't nobody's gonna mess with you. And she'd get dropped off at the house. And I remember sometimes she'd get dropped off. I'm like, I don't know what's going on there, but I pray for her. You know, I pray that she, she's all right, everything works out all right. Just something that. I'm sorry. Okay. I've been holding it. I've been holding it since I seen you. I'm sorry. I'm like looking at her. I'm give you a hug. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm okay. Can't hold me. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you lost your sister. You know, she was a sweet person. You learned a lot from her. Yeah, I'm sure you would have. You would have. Yeah, you would have. Nothing but good things to say about her. She was a sweet kid. She was loving. She never had it. Well, she never did anything to deserve an enemy. I mean, she had a lot of black friends. She had a lot of white friends. She was just an all-around angel. I just put it like that. That's, she was my angel. She was an angel. Well, she guided you here? Yeah, she guided me here. Yeah, she guided me here. When I get to the pearly gates, you know, I hope I get to see her and hug her. Tell mm -hmm. her, you know. We ain't on the bus no more. We can have fun here. <laughs> yeah, we're not just riding on the bus or just walking around school or whatever. We in here. We all we're good. We're protected now. That'd be, that'd be one good thing to see her again, no matter what. I hear her say my name. <laughs> the time had come for Lauren to do what she had wanted to do for as long as she could remember. Get face to face with investigators and get answers to her lingering questions. After the break, one door closes and another opens. Nick, in the past few years you have been working with Triple S Satellite, what makes people want to switch to DISH? Well, DISH has a better TV experience plus better service. And Tupelo Satellite is a local company they can visit. People come to Tupelo Satellite for DISH because we're local and offer the best service at the best price. Get DISH today for just $59.99 per month and begin your ultimate DISH TV experience. Local folks, local service. Come see us at Tupelo Satellite today and switch to DISH. Farmhouse is more than just a store. It's a game changer, a lifestyle, and coming soon, there will be more local art, more workshops, more jewelry, more items for baby, more gifts, because you have helped Farmhouse grow into a new location. In August, come experience the bigger and bolder Farmhouse at 530 West Main Street in Tupelo. For more of the deets, find them on Facebook or visit downtown. This program is only a part of a multimedia project, the continuation of what began as an audio podcast. If you'd like to backtrack and get all the interviews, developments, and revelations that led to Lauren Ochi's arrival in Tupelo, look for 13, the search for Lee Ochi on iTunes, or go to features, podcasts at WTVA.com. For Lauren, the moment of truth had arrived, or so she hoped. Before she ever boarded a plane, I scheduled an appointment with Tupelo Police Chief Bart Aguirre to talk about the Ochi case. When the day of the appointment came, Lauren was excited. There was a lot of nervous energy. Finally, the chance to ask everything 
learn everything face to face. But when the chief's representative met us in the lobby, saw our camera, and was introduced to Lauren. I'm Lauren, it's nice to meet you. Uh -huh. Okay, if we all yeah, what are we doing? Back. I thought we were doing a uh, podcast. Sit down, sit down, talk. All right. We'll Before we do start, anything, yeah. if you don't mind turning that off. The chief refused to see Lauren. They wouldn't share anything with me. I thought they couldn't. That would mm -hmm. jeopardize the case, so it doesn't matter that I'm a, a victim or whatever. It's not gonna, they're not going to tell me anything that they wouldn't tell you that they would jeopardize the case with. I'm not asking them to do that. I'm just asking them to answer these questions. Now, to be fair, I did not tell the chief Lee's sister would be in our party in advance. And I didn't think to point out that although this interview was connected to the podcast, it would be audio and video. A meeting with me solo was scheduled for a later date. And that interview will be made available at WTVA.com in the near future. But as you might imagine, Lauren was crushed. They turned us away at the door, basically. What a surprise. Did I say no way to talk to you? Mm hmm Well, we had a scheduled interview. Why and you lies? They used the whole allotted time to discuss how we couldn't do it. And how they didn't specifically didn't want to do it with me. What a surprise. Yeah. I'm well, just letting you know how that went. I appreciate it. Okay. I love you, Dad. Talk to you later. Okay. Take care. Be sure you get some crystal burgers while you're there. All right. Okay, I'll see you later. Okay. Love you. Bye. Now, we did have one other interview scheduled. Not expecting a lot to come out of it, Lee County Sheriff Jim Johnson was not the sheriff in 92. And if you're not aware, the sheriff's department and city police help each other all the time, but only one person can be in charge. A case must belong to either the sheriff or the police. We just wanted to get Jim to explain the determining factors. What makes a case his or someone else's? A lot more happened. This particular case with Tupelo, they have a large department, has an investigative division that handles felony cases and things of that nature. So any criminal act that happens within the city of Tupelo, the police department handles it. Um, I was still working here during all of that as an investigator with the sheriff's department. Uh, and our sheriff, Shirley, had cancer and died in office in his second term. And with it being an elected position, they had to appoint someone until they could have an election, which this election was going to be about 11 months off. So that's how long this appointment was going to last. And they reached out to the retired Tupelo Police Chief Ed Kreider to serve as the sheriff. A lot of people were coming to us with clues, and we were giving them to the police department and, and vice versa. And uh, some of their searched areas were out in the county that we had helped with. So. Uh, we began to talk about this case with Mr. Kreider as an investigator. He was very interested in it. Uh, he was very passionate about it. He had his own theory about it. Uh, and he wanted to see this case solved as much as anybody. Um, and so he asked us to do what we could uh, to find out about this information that he had, uh, uh, about these theories that we ha he had, and the situation I'm in serving as sheriff now. I probably have got more information about this case than most sheriffs have about a murder that happens within their city, just because of the, the timeline and the way things went. Mm -hmm. it, it's just a bizarre case. It, it, just, it really is. It's one that's baffling. It's one that, um, and I've heard it all. I've heard it from it being a family member to it being a transit coming through town. I mean, I've heard, I've heard it all. You can waste a lot of time chasing the wrong theory, or chasing the wrong idea, or chasing the wrong person. And a polygraph ruled that out to me. If, 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 a poly if you have an individual that, that you are a pretty good suspect on it, and you've got some pretty good information, and you have a great poly examiner that knows what they're doing, and, and I would put hours up there with anybody, um, then you can use that polygraph as a tool to say, okay, are we on the right track? Are we looking at the right person? And if that person uh, that is subjected to that test um, is someone that fails the test, if it was absolute that it was a failed test, you're on the right track. 
and I believe in it. According to the Tupelo Police Department, Lee's mother Vicki failed not one, but three polygraph tests. Once Lauren had met and started hearing from Sheriff Johnson, she became interested in whether or not it would be possible to move Lee's case to his department. Whoever the sheriff is, including myself, could certainly just take the case. Uh, of course, you want to continue to have a good working relationship with your municipalities within your county uh, as professional conduct and things of that nature. And we have that with the city. You know, for us to have the investigator that handled it, myself that had a little bit of knowledge of it, to sit down with them, and we've offered to do whatever we can. You know, that, that's what we're here. We're here to solve it. This is not about a Tupelo or Lee County thing. This is for closure for your family. The sheriff eventually, unprompted, brought up the man many consider to be an even stronger suspect. This theory is coming from the confidence I have in the people that I have talked to, I guess is the best way to say that, is just being interested in the case and saying, okay, tell me. And these are people that were directly involved in it. Uh, Leochi had a friend about her same age that may be affiliated with church activity, with school activity, with something that connected these two friends, as friends do. As my little boy has, my little boy's in Bible school and he's got friends in Bible school. That's just friends. But through this friend, this, this, this murder was introduced to, uh, innocently made a connection with your sister. And then that's possibly when this act happened. That's theory. I, I honestly believe there is one small something out there that's going to that's gonna tilt that thing. Before she left town, Lauren desperately wanted to gain access to one of her sister's school yearbooks. It took a lot of phone calls, trips, and digging. But then, there it was. And as just one final haunting coincidence, during what has been an incredible series of them, this yearbook, which had belonged to a teacher, contained a note from Lee Marine Ochi with the closing words. Please remember me in the years to come.